when I come to the end of my videos, I usually have a little encouragement for everybody that's listening. And that is to always stay alert for those moments or an opportunity that could change your life forever. Now over the 56 years that we've been doing business, there have been lots of moments and lots of opportunities. Some which we have followed up, some which we have missed. And I regret missing some of the opportunities that we have. Yet, at the same time, we have met some opportunities head on and have taken advantage of them and have benefited both financially and personally the development of friendships, development of lifelong associations. And I want to tell you about one such event that we did, and that was an encounter regarding the widow of an artist that we have handled now for oh, nearly, well, I guess about 15, 18 years. And that is the widow of E. E. Glass, or Emerson Everett Glass. We so I want to tell you this little story today about an opportunity that came along to us and how we followed up on that and how it has made a huge change to our business ever since that day. Now this begins in about 2006 or 7 when a friend of ours, who at the time we were living in Laramie, Wyoming, which is my home, uh, we now live in South Carolina near family after a few health issues, but um, at the time we were in Laramie and a friend of mine just called up one day and said, hey, I've got a lady over here I'd like you to meet. And I said, well, sure, okay. And she said her husband is an artist. One of ours invited me to her house and said, I'd like you to meet Nina Glass, N-I-N-A, Nina Glass. And I said, well, that's I didn't, there was a very nice elderly, I say elderly, you know, in her I'm 70s, I guess. Anyway, at the time, it was nice to meet you and how you doing? We had a very pleasant conversation. And she wanted to tell me about her husband, about her husband's work. Now, her husband was an artist. And she told me about how they had um, met somewhere along the way. And the interesting thing is, the story of E.E. E. Glass is a very interesting one. I mean, he was, it's, it's a nostalgic story and a bittersweet story. Because E.E. E. Glass was unfortunately the product of a fire in his early age and got burned on his left hand side and uh, was fortunate or unfortunate, depending on your point of view, Nina Glass, Nina Brandt at the time, was blind and she met Emerson Glass and as they got to know each other, Obviously, the issue of her blindness and the issue of his deformation on one side of his face were really not relevant. So anyway, they had a long and blessed marriage, went on for up until Emerson died in 1987. And uh, his widow lasted until 2007, which is 20 years later. Nina Glass had been living in Colorado and she was on her way to Kansas, near Kansas City, where she was going to go look at a nursing home there. And she was getting on in age and her health was starting to deteriorate. And anyway, um, we had a very pleasant conversation. She invited me to come see her. And she would send me the address to where she was. And um, 
and I gave her my card, had information on and everything. And after a nice cup of coffee, um, I went on my way and uh, my friend and Nina Glass went on their way. Well, it was about a couple of weeks later, I guess, I got an email from Nina Glass saying, here I am. She gave me the name of the place where she found that she was staying at a nursing home in south of Kansas City, a, a, an old, older nursing home at the time. And she again extended the invitation for me and my family to stop by anytime we happened to be passing through, which I appreciated very much. Well, it wasn't too long after that that we were passing by. And as we were on our way, we were heading on our way to South Carolina where my family is and is still is now. And we had to go right through the area where Nina Glass was staying. So I told my wife and I said, let's you know, stop by and say hello and see how she's doing. I said, okay. So we stopped by and found her at the nursing home where she was. And again, just had a pleasant conversation and she wanted to talk about her husband and she wanted to talk about her husband's work, about where they lived, the trouble, small amount of traveling they did and where he went to do his work and all this sort of thing. And she did not have any of her work there in the nursing home. They were all packed up after uh, Emerson died. And so I never got to see it. And she said, I want you to do me one favor. And I said, what's that? She said, please don't show any of Emerson's work until after I die. And I thought that was an unusual request. And so uh, I was certainly honor that. I said, but why is that? She said, well, he was rejected basically all of his life because of he wasn't very sociable. And, and um, she said that he stayed away from crowds. And even though, in my opinion, that I think he was really, really a good artist, he never really had any artwork to show anybody because he never was active socially or in museums or in social circles or art galleries or any of that sort of thing. She said she just basically stayed away from that. So I said, I will certainly honor that and still didn't know what in the world I was getting myself into. Well, anyway, as it turns out that Nina Glass died about a year later. And one day, just out of the blue, I got a call from a law firm in Omaha, Nebraska. And the uh, law firm was actually an estate settlement firm. And they had a lawyer with them. The man that I ended up dealing with was not a lawyer, but he was part of the organization. And he said, we have you listed in the will of Nina Glass. And I said, excuse me? She said that you are listed in the will of Nina Glass. And I said, why in the world am I listed in the will of Nina Glass? I mean, I'm not a relative. I mean, I barely met the lady. And he said, according to her will, she is entrusting you to handle the entire estate of her husband's work. And I said, she, what? She said, she wants you to be the one to do whatever it is that you do to handle the work of her husband, all of his paintings and drawings and whatever he has. She wants you to be the one to handle it all. And I was just stunned stunned and I said well I said and I told the guy I said honestly I don't know what to expect I've never seen any of the artist's work and he said well we have some photographs and stuff and we'll send them to you and I said can you send them by email and he said sure so he ended up selling me a little group of, of pictures by email 
And I went through the pictures, and the work was actually very interesting. Um, very colorful, very nice work. And so I emailed them back. I said, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in, in, in handling this artist's work. I said, but if you don't mind, just send me one of these pictures. Now, there's one picture I picked out. It was probably the best of the little small group that he had sent me. I said, just send me this one picture and let me see if there's something I can do with it. And if we're successful, then I'll get back to you and we'll do some more work and handle some more of these paintings. So he hung, he hung, he hung up the phone. I hung up the phone and I, frankly, I pretty much forgot all about him. And another week goes by and lo and behold, he got a UPS knock on the door. And there was a package for me from Omaha. So I got the packet, opened it up, and here is a painting by Emerson Glass. Gorgeous, absolutely stunning painting. I looked at it and I said, man, I said, this is really good. And I tried to do some research on the artist, but the artist was nowhere. I mean, I did, there was no listing. You know, we subscribed to a number of art research services on the internet and he was on not on any of the research services that i subscribed to he was not in any of the books and i had a very extensive library on american art and there was no mention of this artist e. e glass anywhere so I said, well, you know, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, well, I'll just think about this for a while. And I'm not sure what to do with this artist's work. And so what I did, I, I took better pictures than the one that I had from the attorney or from the law firm. And um, I put it up on my website. And I just said, Emerson Glass, and I said, here's a painting by Emerson Glass, didn't put a price on it, didn't do anything about it, and I just said, okay, and I put, published that on our website, so it was up, this was sometime, I don't know, maybe in the fall of 2007. The next day, a lady called me up, on the telephone, which not even an email. She said, what do you want for that painting that you have there by this Emerson E. Glass? And I hadn't, frankly, I hadn't even thought about it. So I just picked a number out of the air. I said, $300. She said, I'll take it. You, you take master charge or a credit card and debit card and all that. I said, yes, we do. And I, at the time, I was using PayPal, so I gave her my PayPal information. Five minutes later, I had $300. And I never told her that there was going to be any added shipping. I didn't even think about it. And at the time, the country was starting to be in a bit of a recession, so I was glad to make $300. So I paid for shipping gladly. It was unframed, and it wasn't expensive shipping. And I sent the painting to the lady, and she sent me a letter back a couple of days later saying, this is the most fabulous painting I've ever seen. Well, her reaction, my own reaction, the lack of reaction from the people handling her estate was astounding. I mean, it, none of it made any sense. And we had a painting for 24 hours and sold it. So I called the gentleman back and I said, okay, I said, we, I think we're going to be able to do something with these paintings. I said, if you don't mind, you just take a pick of whatever you think is good. Don't bother taking photographs. You just send me a sampling of whatever you have. He said, okay. And a few days later, boom, I had a box in my front door. Uh, in fact, I had two boxes, I remember, and these boxes were full of 
all these small Emerson glass paintings. Some were six, a lot of, he did a lot of six by eight inch paintings. And some were like nine by 12, still small. And I think the largest one was maybe 12 by 16, but nothing bigger than that. And I started looking through these paintings. I unpacked them and I set them on a shelf one by one around the room. And man, I said, the quality of these paintings is super. They had been packed away in the very boxes that this man shipped them to me. And he never even looked at them, except for the one box that he had unpacked and taken some pictures of. So that was the beginning of my relationship with Emerson Glass and the work that he produced. And so I sat there and I had, at the time I had, oh, maybe 15 or 20 small paintings. All, every one of them was first class quality. And I said, okay, how am I gonna market these things? And I put a few up on our website and I waited a few days, but I did not get any action off our website. So something under our website for two weeks was old goods. And then I started looking around for ways to sell it. And I had sold a number of things on the eBay, but I'd never tried anything like this before. So I wrote up a very complete biography. I, when I was in, uh, met with Nina Glass at the nursing home near Kansas City, when she talked about her husband, she talked about, about his life and where he came from, about the people that influenced his life. And it, it, really a wonderful biography. I'm not going to go into much of his biography, although I may touch on pieces here and there of his biography. But uh, his biography you'll find on our website. And if you go to our website on the left hand side, uh, there's some buttons. One of them said E.E. E. Glass Paintings. You can click. Anyway, so pardon the interruption. The point I've been trying to make with all of this jibber jabber is that simply this, that quality speaks for itself. The quality of the Emerson Glass Paintings is just outstanding. What we find is that the quality of the work is what encapsulates value. And, you know, marketing helps and makes people aware. Marketing can be both good and very, very bad. And I'll explain that in another video. But if you do, if an artist does quality work, the world will be the path to your doorway. And the world has already beat a path through the doorway of Emerson Glass and his paintings. So, I just want to leave you with that. With the understanding that there are opportunities everywhere. There are opportunities that you meet and meet people that you have simply things come your way that you can see and when you see these opportunities, you just simply know that there's something that has some real value and you have the chance to either participate with it or not. In my own case, the story with Emerson Glass really is not so much of my making as it is the consistent pursuit by the first Nina Glass and second by the uh, estate firm in Omaha to find me out and to put me in a place where I had to take a look at these paintings. And as a result, we profited a lot and so did the Emerson Glass Estate. There were no children to leave the money these paintings to. So Nina Glass established a good cause where whatever profits came out after the fees of the the handlers of the estate was, as we sold paintings, we just simply sent them the money and they distributed to whatever cause that Nina Glass wanted the money sent to. 
And the real benefactor in all this was some really good children's benefits. You know, that Nina Glass subscribed to or she liked. And the money that probably hundreds of thousands of dollars went into the pocket of this particular children's organization. So I just want to kind of leave you with that. And I'm going to, I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing the paintings, by the way, that, that we've shown. And again, if you like this video, like it. And if you want to subscribe, please do. But whatever you do, stay tuned, stay well, and as always, stay alert. Stay alert for that moment or that opportunity that could possibly change your life forever. Until then, I thank you for watching. Until the next time.